Hey guys, hope you're doing all right. Uh, we're going to continue our study on the book of Psalms today. Uh, but before we do, I want to get over with the uh, announcements that we have. Uh, summer schedule should be posted on our Facebook page. Um, and also I texted out to you uh, a basic outline of what it's going to look like. And so uh, last week we had that meeting, but um, ultimately what the decision finally came to was that uh, since we have our Wednesday night um, live stream with Pastor Harold, we are going to uh, probably move our Wednesday night activities to Thursday. And I think that gives us a lot more flexibility on what we do and how long we can do it for. And so since we're not meeting at the church as a church on Wednesday nights, um, you know, we're not really bound by that time limit anymore. So I'll give you more updates on specific times, uh, but most, if not all of our activities are gonna take place uh, from about six to 7.30. Um, so that timetable is still there, but it's gonna be on Thursdays instead. Um, the next thing is Falls Creek. Uh, since we will not be able to go to Falls Creek, we did organize another retreat with, um, with just us, uh, no other churches. Uh, but there's going to be worship. There's going to be um, there's going to be fellowship. There's going to be cool stuff to do there, and an awesome looking cabin. If you haven't seen it yet, I really would encourage you to uh, check it out. It's called the Mansion, um, and uh, I believe I made a small video with pictures in there, so you could always uh, look that up. Um, uh, I think that's all I have for. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'd love to get in touch with you again. Um, and I'll give you more updates on how to register for that camp. But since it's just us, we have a little more flexibility and time when it comes to it. And always, as always, invite your friends. Um, this is a great opportunity to invite your friends to church. Every, every summer week um, is a great act, uh, opportunity, but especially this camp. Um, so we're going to be uh, in the book of Psalms again, uh, in the same chapter, actually, 119. And we're going to be reading from verses 11 through 17, all right? So if you uh, have your Bibles ready, I, I want to have you guys encouraged to, uh, to turn to those. Uh, always have a physical Bible with you if you can. If not, um, you know, use your phone, use a tablet. But something that won't get you distracted is obviously the best, right? So if you're on your phone reading and then you get a notification, then, you know, you're, you're done for. So uh, I really do want to encourage you guys to have a physical Bible with you every time we do this, all right? So Psalm 119, verses 11 through 17, all right? Follow along as I read him out loud. Uh, I have stored up in your word, I have stored up your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the rules of your mouth in the way of your testimonies I delight. As much as in all riches, I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes, I will not forget your word. Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. All right, so I want to start off today with a fun little activity. I'm going to read a small quote from um, a certain movie and uh, see how many of those you can get right, all right? With great power comes great responsibility. Why so serious? Oh no, it wasn't the airplanes. It was beauty that killed the beast. There's no place like home. They may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom. The seaweed is always greener in someone else's lake. You did it, congratulations. World's best cup of coffee. Great job, everybody. It's great to be here. If you wear a dress and have an animal sidekick, you're a princess. The force is with me. I am one with the force. You're gonna need a bigger boat. My precious. If you build it, he will come. Every great love starts with a great story. Give me some of your thoughts. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Mama always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. You're lucky, no memories, no problems. We may be in, uh, evolved, but deep down, we are still animals. You get hurt, hurt him back. You get killed, walk it off. And the last one is, I'll be back. So uh, compare your answers, see how many of them you get. Uh, I won't give you the answers. I'm going to rely on your Sunday school teachers to hopefully give you the answers to those. So from that activity, uh, we learned one thing for sure, right? It's that we have 
really good memories when it comes to remembering like quotes or little bits of information, right? And so if like your favorite song came on or if any song came on really that's popular, I, I, I'm pretty sure you'd be able to sing along with it even if you haven't heard it uh, for a long time or if you never looked up the lyrics. And with these quotes, you recognize uh, hopefully a lot of them, what movies they were in. And so um, this memory of ours is God given, right? Like it's, it's something that God uh, gave to us um, to, as a blessing, right? To be able to remember things is a huge blessing, all right? Ask any amnesiac or, you know, uh, but what do we do with that memory? Um, what do we do with that God given ability? We use it to memorize things of the world. We use it to memorize things like movie quotes, song lyrics, um, and, and you know, like little excerpts from books and stuff. And, and so I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but you know, how much of that do we invest in memorizing God's scripture? And this one hits home for me as well because scripture memorization is not one of my strong suits, but it's no excuse, right? And so with that in mind, I wanna jump into today's lesson. So let's look back on Psalms uh, 116, 119, sorry, uh, verses 11 and 12, right? And so what does it mean when the psalmist writes that he is storing up uh, God's word in his heart, right? Um, he, he's telling him to, he's saying that he's storing it up uh, as in the fact that he's memorizing it, right? He's keeping track of it. He's reminding himself of it constantly. And so to, for, for us to store up God's word like the psalmist wants to, we have to be in his word, we have to read it, we have to memorize it, right? Because there's no point in, in reading something if you're not gonna remember it. In the same way that there's no point in listening to somebody if you're gonna turn around and forget it right away, right? If someone asks you to do something, I mean, it'd be pretty rude of you if you just forgot about it and moved on, right? And so he tells us not only to memorize, not only to store it up, but he tells us to store it up because we don't want to sin against him. And so for, for us to know what God wants, what God expects, and what pleases God, we have to be in his word and we have to memorize what's in his word, right? And so it, you don't want to ask, ask that person every time over and over and over again uh, what they like and what they dislike, right? I mean, you should be able to remember some things that they don't like and some things that they do like when they first tell it to you. And so in the same way, we need to make sure that we are constantly remembering um, what pleases God what God doesn't like, right? And we only do that by storing up his word in our hearts. So uh, verses 13 and 14, right? Follow along as I read out that part again. Uh, With my lips, I declare all the rules of your mouth in the way of your testimonies. I delight as much as in all riches. And so he's talking um, about it's not important, sorry. It's not enough to just simply read and learn his word. It's also important to say his word. It's, a, it's important to live out that word is what he's saying. There's no point in us memorizing scripture and over and over again if we're not gonna apply it, if we're not gonna tell it to someone who needs to hear it. And so uh, he tells us to do that because um, that we need to delight uh, in his testimony, in the way of his testimonies, as much as in all riches. And I don't know about you, uh, but I like stuff. Like, I like nice things. And I'm pretty sure that's the same for everybody who's ever existed in all time, right? It's not a sin, well, it's not a sin to, to like nice things. It's, it's a sin to obsess about them. It's a, sin to, it's a sin to envy them. It's a sin to greed, uh, to have greed over it. Um, but it's natural for us to like nice things, right? And so what he's saying here is that we need to delight not only in learning and memorizing the word, but using that word as much as we would um, uh, in getting a new car and buying a new house and getting a new game station uh, and getting, you know, new makeup or something that, you know, younger people like, I don't know. Uh, but those things that please us, this should please us more than all those things combined. 
So verses uh, 15 and 16, it says, I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Um, I feel like media has given the word meditate a weird term, right? Like when we think of meditate, we think of like either, you know, those Asian monks in, in their monasteries or whatever they call in their temples. And they're, you know, like they're all curled up and they got their fingers up, right? And, uh, and they're chanting some stuff over and over again. Um, or you think of, you know, people under a waterfall or, or something along those lines. Um, and while those are forms of meditation, all meditation is simply saying is you focus on an idea, right? You think about something over and over and over and over again. And that's what meditation is. And so for us to meditate on his word, it means that not only do we read his word, but we think about it. We try to examine it. We try to break it down. We try to uh, look at the text surrounding it. We try to understand what he's trying to say to us there. And one of the, the biggest struggles that we have in this information-based society today is we try to get information immediately. And so once you read something, you expect to understand it, right? And, and so same thing with the news. You think of it as, hey, this, if this happens, then this is going to happen. You see a cause and effect, or you see a story, or, or you see someone pushing an agenda, and you think, hey, I read it, and I understand it. Let's move on. But God's word isn't that way. God's word um, demands that we examine not only the word itself, uh, but his intentions, his will, and his purpose for us. And so for us to meditate on his word, it means that we could take something as small as even a verse and we spend time, like actual time, thinking about that particular passage and nothing else. And that's difficult. That is probably one of the toughest things you could do um, is just constantly think about the same thing over and over and over again, right? We call that obsession. We call it a lot of bad things. But in this case, this is a good thing. Uh, verse 16, it says, I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Um, and so for us to delight in something, we have to break it down, right? Like, what does it mean for something to delight you? It means it makes you happy. It means it makes you pleased. It makes it, makes it so that you uh, gain some sort of satisfaction from it. Right? And for the longest time, this is something that I struggle with as well, is when I read God's word, I wasn't trying to listen to what God was saying. I was just reading it like a book, right? And there are certain parts of the Bible that are fun to read, like as a story, right? Like if you're reading through uh, the book of First and Second Samuel, you're reading about, you know, like uh, David. You're reading about uh, you're reading about Solomon. You're reading about, you're reading about Saul, or you could read in the book of Genesis. And, and these are interesting stories, um, and they might be a fun read but there's no delight in it if you don't understand what God is saying to you in those books. And, and so to, for us to delight in it, we have to meditate on it because we want to understand it, right? And so there's a process here that we need to take, and we learned about this um, earlier on in the year when we we're talking about our soap, right? And this is the exact same method uh, that produces the results that we're looking for. Because God's word isn't something so simple that we can read it once, understand it, and move on with our lives. You could read the same passage a thousand different times with a thousand different people, and they'll get a different interpretation almost every time because it's, it's God's word and it's a living word, and that means that it applies to us in different parts of our life in different ways. And... So the challenge I want to give to you guys is not only from last week where we were talking about uh, being more intentional when you're reading the word, but being uh, more thorough, right? Studying the word, not just read it, think about it, meditate on it. And you'll find that once you see those results, once you see what God is trying to tell you and you live in that way, that there are going to be things that you are going to delight in because God is going to uh, is going to fill you with that peace is going to fill you with that joy and ultimately every single time like 10 out of 10 times you're going to find that the path that God has for you is infinitely better than whatever path that you think you can take um, that might lead to your happiness and so to finish that off it says I will not forget your word I will not forget your word. 
Now that's an interesting phrase because not only is that an action, right? That's also a result. What that means is for us to forget something, it means that we don't remember it, right? Like you don't remember something, so you forgot it. And, and it sounds like it's common sense, duh, John, right? Um, but if we're constantly thinking about something, if we're meditating on it, and if we're applying it, then we're not gonna forget. In the same way that we don't forget how to speak or how to walk, right? Uh, or as they say, how to ride a bike. Because if you learn it right the first time and if you use it and if you apply it, then there's no way you can forget. And so that's the challenge I have for you guys. Like I said earlier, be intentional, meditate on those words, all right? That's my challenge for you guys this week as you read your Bibles. Um, don't just read the words on the page. Pray on it. Think about it. Ask God to, to teach you what he is trying to say through that passage. All right? I love you guys, and I hope you guys have a wonderful week. God bless.